Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Russ with rwgresearch.com. So I was doing some digging in my hard drives and I found some old footage of some old projects and I figured uh, this is probably something that a lot of you would be interested in seeing. So. Hello, mic check. All right. Here we are. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ, rwgresearch.com. So check it out, today is 11-3-2017. Uh, uh, I've missed quite a few days, so I'm gonna run through everything really quickly. I'm gonna show you what I've done, uh, show you what I did and talk about what's going on. So, um, so, I've got this belt right here, and this belt fits on the Bendini wheel like this and connects to this pretty big uh, motor. And what is this motor, you may ask? This motor is actually a treadmill motor. So it is 130 volts DC, and it's 2.5 horsepower. And I was going to use it to just mildly extract the rotational energy of this and see what I can get out of it. Um, so anyway, that's what that is. Uh, the result of that was that the motor is way too dragged down. It drags it down. You can hold the shaft at the right RPM with the right stuff set up here. You can hold the shaft and, and put some torque output into your hand and it's not enough to run that type of generator, which it isn't even a generator. It's a permanent magnet motor and I was gonna use it as a generator. So. That's something I tried, didn't exactly work, but I'm glad I tried it. And you could still pull off power with the mechanical rotation, but you need a much smaller rotor. Don't forget, this particular unit with the small size wire was not designed to be functioning in that manner. So it makes sense um, that you can't do that. All right, so uh, another thing I wanna talk about, I put batteries in parallel and series. And so I had parallel series eight, of these big batteries, 100 amp hour, and parallel series, the 35 amp hour that we've been using. And what happened was, is I was using the big ones to charge the small ones, because they were pretty low. And what happened was, those little batteries, four of them completely died. Very strange. Um, so the electricity, the flyback energy, whatever happened, damaged the batteries in such a way where four of them were charging, and they have their perfectly fine batteries, and the other four are basically opened. But they hold voltage, but no current whatsoever. Kind of bizarre. Um, so whatever the case may be, uh, I haven't resolved why that happened, but it did. So another thing I tried was I made this bifiler flat pancake coil out of number six AWG um, battery cable. And so what I was trying to do with this, and I was trying to put something in the line, I was trying to put what you would consider a node in the line of this system. And the goal for that was to actually extract energy using either the magnetic field of this coil or through actually putting a bridge rectifier or something across this coil. And it was pretty cool. You could put this coil in the line. It's pretty well a dead short. It's about 10 feet of this wire each so 10 feet total, I mean, five foot each, something in that range. And it's very bizarre because uh, you could put a bridge rectifier across here or a half bridge and you could get, you know, 12, 13 volts with a little bit of current. Um, I don't know the exact amount of current, but you could get some out of there. And it was kind of cool because I'm not sure how much that really affected the unit because it already has to go through this wire. You could actually put one of those at every single point you have a connection. So it was almost bizarre. Yet, uh, that's what I was trying to do. And the other method was to put a coil on top here. So by putting a flat uh, pancake coil, an induction coil from an induction oven with the ferrite in there. Without the ferrite, it wasn't very good. But with the ferrite, uh, you could actually get some good high voltage potential with a little bit of current, but uh, not much. So the second thing was to connect this in different places. So I connected it on the ground, I connected it on the flyback side, and I connected it between the uh, positive side. And what you'll note is that on the ground side, you have current going up and then it sharply shuts itself off. On the flyback side, you have a sharp turn on and then it slowly goes down. And on the positive 
input terminal here, you actually get current that goes up and then back down. So what I noticed was when you have a sharp pulse, the coil does a good job. When you have a current flowing and it just does that and comes back down, it doesn't do very good at all. Like pretty well no effect, uh, even for induction purposes. It really almost had no effect. Uh, by the way, the coil was connected like spiral wound as you see in Tesla's patent. So connected inside back to outside and so forth. Um, so that was that and I tried that and uh, uh, kind of some interesting results there and there's more to explore with low impedance, super low impedance transformers. I didn't really have one so I just used that coil as my low impedance transformer. So as the last stage of this, as today this unit is going somewhere else, it was brought here by an individual to test and now it's going somewhere else. It's not mine. Uh, so. I wanted to test one last thing, which was can I connect the input to the flyback charge station back to the input? And the answer is yes. So let me show you exactly what I've done. Um, I've connected these power supplies. I have one of these on hand and I, I got a few more. And these are about 88% efficient, made by Phoenix Contact. And they are 24 volt output at 2 amp and you can adjust them from 22.5 to 28.5, which is perfect for getting over the voltage that we need. And DC input, uh, it says 90 all the way up to 350 DC, or you can do AC. Um, and the higher the voltage, the less amperage it uses and the more efficient it is. Uh, I've been running it around 260 volts is what about this thing sits at. And then you can adjust the voltage and get the current adjusted. And you can do that just right to get everything balanced and charging, so it's pretty cool. So uh, let me go show you on the other side of this unit uh, how I've got these connected and what else I'm doing. Okay, so uh, chopped my head off probably, but that's okay. Um, so what I want to show you here though is I've got the 10,000 joule capacitor bank connected. So both these banks are connected uh, in, um, I'd be careful not to touch them, they're only at 24 volts. but the, Connected here, uh, they are connected in parallel. So both these banks are in parallel. These are 3,300 UF, 350 volts DC connected in parallel. That's maximum voltage. And this is a 8, 12 volt battery bank, right? And they're all connected in a series. So I've got 100 volts basically charging this bank, which you can bring up to about just under 300, it really won't go past 300. Um, and then I've got those power supplies I mentioned. Each one goes to two of the batteries. So I basically are char I'm charging every two batteries with one of these controllers, and I can adjust that current, and I can get them to actually uh, take the flyback energy, right? So I'm taking this, putting it into here, converting it back into here at a high, high voltage, then converting it back down to 24 volts and charging these batteries. And it's, it actually works. You can actually connect the system in such a way that it's looped, which is actually pretty hard to do. These are isolated outputs. So they don't really care uh, being connected in parallel series. They, they don't really care at all. So they're isolated outputs and inputs. So everything is completely isolated in here as far as this test. I haven't blown anything up. Uh, so I'm going to fire this up and what's interesting is I keep blowing up transistors and instead of replacing them right now I'm just cutting them off and we'll replace them some other time. So what I've got here is I've got three coils on and I'm going to turn the power on hopefully, let me get my glasses just in case, but hopefully nothing blows up. Uh, it's a possibility it might. So right now we're sitting at 24 volts on the cat bank, 106 volts on the uh, big bank and I am going to put this in front of the cat bank so I don't accidentally lean against it. There we go, just as a precaution. So I'm going to turn this on and you should hear it squeal. Now what is it doing? It's charging the cat bank it's at 98 volts, 90 volts, 91 volts. These are going to start turning on. Oh, they're already on. And they're going to start putting out amperage, and I'll show you that in a minute. And so they are putting out amperage, 
okay, back into the batteries as the system is running. Now, what's happening is there's an oscillation going on, so the rotor's not spinning. So this is the only coil that's on right now, the bottom one, that's the trigger coil. It's the only one that's on, and it is related to the capacity and voltage over here. That's why the frequency is changing, as you can hear. Now, if I flip another one on, I killed the oscillation. So I'm going to turn this back off and turn it back on. And when I turn it back on, since it's biased, it starts oscillating. I'm going to try another coil. What I'm trying to do is get the, uh, get the system to oscillate, because you can. You can get it to oscillate higher. That's why I got that shield there. So um, things are in a situation here where I can't flip any more on, but when you flip another coil on, you actually get even a higher frequency, like that. And then you can go even higher, but eventually it gets out of self-oscillation mode and you have to start it over. So usually two and three is the ones I've been using, but they're not happy, so, so ten it is. Um, so you can boost the voltage and you can change the amperage uh, and get that stuff balanced, but I'll let it run just like this. Hopefully we don't blow up any more transistors at the moment, and I'm going to get you closer so you can see all the, uh, the voltage and amperage readings. So let's have a look. Okay, so we're going to look at the oscilloscope first. I basically have the uh, yellow trace on the cap bank. It's actually dropping right now. I have the uh, purple on the battery bank. And then the, this is the math function. We can turn it off, I guess. Um, and then I have the blue on the current probes coming out. So these guys right here. So I'm, I've got all these current, oh man, I'm zoomed way in. I got all these current probes, are all these at the same place, all reading at the same time so I can calculate all of the current, right? So this is the voltage across the battery bank here. This is the current for each one of these outputs in order. Uh, and then I'm pulling about 0.9 amp. And you can see here I'm pulling 874 milliamps. And if you added all these up, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, that's 12, so that's 26. 2.2? Something like that. And there you go. It's at 2.5 uh, 2 basically. I guess it's, yeah, okay. It's about right. It's a little different. I'm not 100% sure why I did set everything, but it's a little different. You can't trust this 100%, but anyway, the point is, is that, yeah, it is feeding back. So I'm, I'm only putting, right, you got to take this as your voltage measurement times this current. That's what I'm putting in. This voltage times this current. I'm sorry, the green and the pur purple is what I'm putting in. And the purple and the blue is what I'm putting back in through the power supplies in total. Um, that's additive, so it's actually only putting like less than that. I wouldn't call it 0.6, which is about what I'm reading. Uh, but anyway, it's very interesting because actually you got to do 25 volts, you got to do each bank, you got to do all the calculations. It's a bit tricky. Uh, it is, from my understanding, not gaining, but I really don't know. Um, I didn't give it a chance to get high. Once this voltage gets up to like 230, you can let it sit. But anyway, it's interesting because I have the flyback charging this cap bank. And I have that going into these isolated DC-DC converters, and those are all running to each battery bank. And I truly am feeding the energy back into the system. So it's pretty cool because it's actually a challenge to get a system to be looped without having ground problems and power problems and all that. And these power supplies do a pretty good job, but they're only like 88% efficient, so they get pretty hot. They actually get pretty warm. You'd have to calculate all that heat loss and figure out where you're at. And it's a bit of a disaster if you try to do all that calculation. But you can see it's in self-oscillation mode. 
So if I if I go way out, you'll see it's just oscillating at every single point. It's not rotating. So I will fire it up in a rotation, but uh, for now, it just sits there and it's happy. And like I said, if you change that, you change the frequency. Because you change the amount of inductance, capacitance, reactance, and all that fun stuff, and you change the, basically change the self frequency. All right, so there you go. So I'll shut this thing off. You can see these are now dying down because of the uh, voltage drop. Usually this thing's up real high in a voltage, and so it doesn't drop that fast, but uh, I don't know. It's been running all day, and then um, I shut it off, and I'm sorry, it shut itself off, which means maybe it was, it was getting up to a point where the self-oscillation between these batteries, the coil, and that cap were not quite right uh, where they need to be, and so it quit. All right, let's put you back on the other side, and I'll give you a few more thoughts. Okay, here we are. All right, well, here we are. Um, I've done a lot of testing. Um, I want to give you some conclusions as they stand for now. Um, I tried a few scenarios where I was taking one battery bank in series, charging another battery bank in parallel, putting the motor between those two, so the ener positive energy was like transferring to, from one battery to another. What I learned doing that was that when I have more than one battery to my series batteries, the capacity changes. So you have uh, three 100 amp hour batteries, that's 300, uh, that's 100 amp hours in series, but you triple the voltage. So on the other side, if you're trying to charge three batteries in parallel at a lower voltage, because you want to use the difference in potential, uh, you cannot actually charge those batteries at the same rate, as far as what I could tell. Um, it's good, but it's not great. And the reason for that is, is because three batteries in parallel are 300 amp hours. So you're trying to charge a 300 amp hour battery, battery with one 100 amp hour battery. So um, that was my conclusion. So I thought, well, if I had three of them and I could just do one and then put another bank on the flyback, maybe I could get that system to work. And I, I didn't get to explore that enough but just from the brief testing, it was not as helpful as, as I was hoping. Interesting nonetheless, and still worth exploring a little bit. But my thought is that if you had the same amp hour batteries parallel series, then you could charge actually the one 12 volt battery with the three 12 volt batteries from series to parallel. And you could run the motor in between and you'd have a fully charged battery when you were done, or very close to it. And then you'd use the flyback to charge a few other batteries. Um, so there's a lot of options going on. And then you can put these coils in place and uh, the Pantic cake coil, uh, low impedance in induction coil or something, and play around with these ideas. I did a lot of this, and my conclusions are, are kind of like this. You can take energy and transfer it from one place to another. I could put energy in these capacitors and transfer it through a coil to another capacitor with really high efficiency, if everything was tuned right. Um, in this system, you're only playing with like 3 volts, or maximum of like 20% of the battery capacity, right? More like 10%. And um, so from like 12 volts down to 10 volts or 11 volts. So you're playing in this window. You can't ever bring it down to zero. Where a capacitor, you could transfer all of it, all the way down to zero. So that's the difference here, is if you're taking these batteries and you're dumping it into this coil and you're trying to charge another set of batteries with it, it works pretty well because you're capturing most of that energy. The losses are in the resistance. Um, these huge wires are very important because it keeps the losses of the system down according to resistance. Um, what's also very interesting is that the ground line, the negative feed here, is the only place that the system is connected to ground of these batteries. This battery is connected to the ground of the charge bank, and the center battery, the same ground, goes back into this. So what do you have? You have current on the ground side going up and dropping off. Technically, that is the only input you calculate because it's the only place that the ground side of this run battery is connected. So you only need to worry about the ground side. When you measure the high voltage flyback side, 
you see that the current jumps up and comes back down and it's usually less. So what I found out was at low, low voltages, so Bendini and others always say never put a lower voltage battery on the flyback side, always put an equal or higher value. Well, when this bank is below 100 volts, you see that the current curve, right, input current is like this and output current is real slow. It takes forever for the current to get back out of the coil. It's kind of interesting. Try to do some calculations to, to, to see if that much more current was useful, but because you were at a lower voltage, um, I'm not quite sure. I, I kind of still wonder if there's a way to extract that amount of current, but when you take that amount of current times the voltage it's putting out, it equals the exact same amount of energy. Um, so it doesn't really help you. So I basically learned that you can take energy and you can transfer it into a coil, you can create a magnetic field, you can take that energy back out of the coil, you can dump it into a cap bank, you can run it back and loop it back to the main battery. And what do you get? Uh, I actually need to run this exact test for weeks and weeks to really find out. And I don't know uh, if I'll get the opportunity. At the moment I won't be doing it here because like I said this is going somewhere else. I will have access to it for now and uh, I may or may not run those tests and so if this is the end of <laughs> working on this and video, uh, videoing this device and this is sort of my, my latest update, my last update and um, I missed some of the ones in between but I kind of explained to you what I did. Um, and like I said, right now I'm running on 100 volts. Um, I will say that the higher the voltage, I think the better this device works. Um, but I haven't confirmed that. It's just a hunch. And uh, yeah, this has been interesting. Uh, it's been a really wild ride. There's been lots of other things happening besides just this. And it's kind of been mind boggling. And, uh, and here we are at the end of it for now with this setup in this location. So thanks for watching. God bless. Have a good day. Off to whatever happens next. I really don't know. But we'll figure it out when we get there. All right. Bye-bye. By the way, thanks to everything, everyone, and every stuff that allowed me to work on this project. Lots and lots of thoughts. Here's a 96 volt battery charger. And uh, those are the batteries there. Power supplies I was playing with, these kind. I'm not sure if these are isolated, um, so I didn't use them. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll give it one last little uh, kind of walk around. And uh, we'll go from there. Happy tinkering, boys and girls. This is a pretty. Uh, a pretty cool shot, to be honest with you. There's a lot, and back up even further, there's a lot going on in this one shot right here. Lots of stuff. Oh. Pulse motor build off 2017. How do you like that one? <laughs> All the meters are beeping over there, man. They're all beeping. All right. Well, that's it. Russ out. Thanks for watching. All right. I'm going to fire this thing up some more while I got the time. Bye-bye.